Welcome to the Three Column Cash Book tutorial. The Three Column Cash Book is element P5 of Unit 11 Accounting Concepts. On the right hand side are a series of transactions to be recorded. These are not the same as the transactions that you need to do for the assignment. This is just an example. A written guide on how to do the Three Column Cash Book is included in the VLE as are the transactions that you need to record for the assignment. Don't be confused that the three column cash book actually has 10 columns. Three columns refers to discount, cash and bank. Discount recorded is the amount of discount either received by the business or given by the business. Cash refers to physical cash, physical money, and the bank transactions refer to anything that is related to bank, e.g. E check payments, direct debits, etc. If the transaction is a cash transaction, it will be explicitly stated in the list of transactions on the right hand side. If it does not say cash transaction, assume it is a bank transaction. Transactions are recorded either as a debit, i.e. money received by the business, or as a credit, money that is leaving the business. Debits are always recorded on the left and credits are always recorded on the right. If there is a discount, the discount must be shown in the discount column. If there is no discount mentioned, then you enter 0% in the discount column. Let us begin by bringing forward the balance from the previous accounting period, which was £115 of cash and £390 in the bank. Because these are positive balances, we record them on the left hand side of the ledger, money that the business has. If they were minus balances, i.e. an overdraft, we would have to record them on the credit side of the uh, ledger. Let's now look at the first actual transaction on April the 2nd. The business paid trade payables by cheque of £540 to P. John and £120 to T. Magda. Now, this is the total amount before the 5% discount. The business has received a 5% discount because probably we settled our invoice early, so we get a reward for doing so. We will need to record the date of the transaction who the transaction is for, and the amount, and the discount that's calculated. Now we can make Excel calculate the amount that we should enter. We don't enter £540, we enter the amount after the discount has been applied. So 540 minus the 5%. This is how we do it. Click in the bank column because it's a bank transaction, not a cash transaction and it's on the credit side because we are spending that money, we're paying it out. First of all, we put an equal sign in to tell Excel we're gonna do a calculation, and then we enter the original amount of 540, minus 540 times 5%. Well, this is a, works out what the 5% is, and then we deduct that from the original amount. And Excel then calculates that for us. Okay, so you can be guaranteed that your uh, calculations are accurate. Let's do the second transaction. T Macta. Again, it's a 5% discount. And the amount is 120 minus 120 minus 120 times five percent so there's our first two transactions completed so our next transaction is on april the 9th and it's cash sales so we've received cash from sales so that must mean it is on the debit side of the account so we enter the in the dates which is the 9th of april and we'll call that cash sales there's no discount mentioned, so we enter 0%. 
and we enter it in the cash column because it specifically mentions cash and the amount of 699. So that's a nice straightforward one. So the next transaction might seem a little confusing. On April the 16th, we pay 500 pounds of our cash into the business bank account. Now, this means that the cash, the physical cash, leaves the business. So we need to record this transaction on the credit side. So you can see here on the 16th of April, we've paid cash into the bank, 500 pounds. Now, the cash is leaving the business, but the money is staying within the business. So the bank is receiving it. So we need to record this transaction on both sides of the ledger to show that the money has not left the business, it's just changed from cash into the bank. So now this transaction is completed. We can see that we've paid cash into the bank, so we record that as a credit in the cash column, but we've received the cash into the bank, so we record that as a debit in the bank column. So now we can move on to the next transactions. So on April, April the 17th, um, payments from customers, we receive some payments from customers or with a 2.5% uh, discount. The transaction mentions a 2.5% discount, but it does not mention cash, so we assume that it's a bank transaction. We're receiving the money, so it's on the debit side. W wall is 264 minus 2.5%. So we enter 264 minus 264 multiplied by 2.5%. And it automatically calculates the actual amount received. Here's a transaction for L Oakdale. 2.5% discount, you can see this is calculated. The th original amount minus the original amount times 2.5%. It's calculated at £351. And finally, see Ahmed. And again, just to review that calculation, equal sign to tell the Excel that you're doing a calculation. The original amount minus the original amount times two and a half percent. It's calculated at 117 pounds. Our next transaction is a straightforward cash purchase of 78 pounds. It's a purchase, so it goes on the credit side. There's no discount applied, and it mentions cash, so we record it in the cash column. On April the 20th, we pay rent of 560. Again, it's a payment, so it must appear on the credit side. It doesn't mention cash, so we record it in the bank column. There's no discount applied, so we enter 0%. On April the 23rd, uh, 21st, the owner withdraws 200 pounds from the bank for his own personal use. So we record it thus. When an owner takes money out of the business for his own personal use, we refer to this as drawings. There's no discount mentioned. The money that is left the business has left the bank account. And we record it on the credit side because the money has left the business. Even though it has gone into the owner's pocket, it is not in the business any longer. It is in the owner's pocket. And finally, we record an incoming uh, receipt of £25 commission via cheque. So we record that on the debit side in the bank column. So 25th of April, commission, no discount, and £25 in the bank column. We've now recorded all of the transactions, but what we now need to do is balance the cash book. We balance the ledger at the end of the accounting period so we can calculate the amount to bring forward into the next accounting period and to check to see whether we've made any accounting errors. We'll balance the cash columns first. Before we do this, we'll quickly do some subtotals. This is how to do it. 
created a row called subtotals on both sides and I'm going to add the, all the um, cash together uh, for each column. You can do this using the auto sum feature in Excel. Highlight the columns down to the row where you want the answer to appear and hit auto sum. And it will automatically calculate a total. What we now do is we enter the highest of these two figures into the totals row. And we can do this just by making that equal that. What we now do is we calculate the difference between the big side and the small side and we enter the answer as balance carried down and we always put the balance carried down above the total on the short side of the ledger. Calculate this by taking that subtotal and minus that subtotal. We can now see that if we add together the subtotal and the difference between the two sides, it equals the same amount as this side. And that's how we do our error check. Now, this figure of 814, sorry, this figure of 236 is the balance of the cash. That's the amount of cash that we actually have. We write this on the heavy side of the ledger and we call it the balance bought down. This will be our balance bought forward in the following accounting period. Those two values are the same. We're now ready to do the same thing for the bank column. So we'll begin by getting a subtotal of both sides of the ledger. And we can see that this is the heavy side and this is the short side. So we can calculate the balance carried down as equal to that figure minus that figure. The total will be the same on that side. And we can prove that it's balances if we just add these two up. We see that they're the same. And all that remains to be done now is their balance bought down figure which is equal to the balance carried down figure and that's it if you're not confident in using Excel to carry out the calculations please use a calculator however you need to make sure that those calculations are correct in order to be good enough for a pass, you must show that you've balanced the ledger for both the cash and the bank columns. If you require additional help, please feel free to email me on my school email address and I'll do my best to support you.